theories about Cleopatra's lovers, and her sexual proclivities, abound. She was married to her brothers, bedded at least two powerful Roman men, and may have fashioned a vibrator using bees. The history of Cleopatra's sex life is both in keeping with the Egyptian sexual mores of her time and potentially taboo by modern standards. She got what she wanted, indicating she was as intelligent and charming as she was sexy. Join us today as we look at the real details of Cleopatra's epic and mythic sex life. According to legend, Cleopatra fashioned a vibrating device for self-pleasure by putting angry bees into a hollowed-out gourd. In other versions of the story, Cleopatra sat on top of a papyrus box of angry bees. If true, she's not the only Egyptian to bring animals into the bedroom. There were accounts of men engaging in intercourse with cattle, women doing the same with dogs, and Egyptians successfully figuring out how to do the deed with crocodiles. Crocodiles could also help prevent pregnancy. The animal's dung was a common contraceptive. Cleopatra was known as Mariacane by the Greeks, a term that literally translates to she who gapes wide for 10,000 men. According to legend, she fellated 100 men in a single night. She supposedly used her affinity for this act to seduce Julius Caesar. In keeping with Egyptian custom, Cleopatra married her brother, Ptolemy XIII, after her father passed away in 51 BCE. Her father designated Cleopatra and her brother as co-regents before his passing because, by Egyptian law, she had to have a male co-ruler. At the time of their marriage, Ptolemy XIII was between 10 and 12 years old, something Cleopatra used to her advantage. She quickly pushed aside her brother, issuing administrative documents in her name only and putting her likeness on coinage. After three years of this, however, Ptolemy XIII forced Cleopatra into exile. She fled to Syria where she seduced the Roman general Julius Caesar and persuaded him to recapture the Egyptian throne on her behalf. Ptolemy XIII fled and later perished. When Cleopatra returned to Egypt, she married her other young brother, Ptolemy XIV. Somewhere between 11 and 13 years old at the time, Ptolemy XIV and Cleopatra co-ruled until Ptolemy perished in 44 BCE. After that, Cleopatra co-ruled with her son by Julius Caesar, Caesarion. Cleopatra supposedly arranged weeks-long sexually charged parties with her lover Mark Antony. They founded a group known as the Inimitable Livers, or the Society of Inimitable Livers, who lived the good life and, according to historians, engaged in endless debauchery and folly. They feasted, played games, and partied on the outskirts of Alexandria, most likely a cult dedicated to the god Dionysus. They often staged lewd theatricals, in which people danced nude while drinking to excess. Cleopatra was the daughter of King Ptolemy XII Orletes, a Macedonian who became the king of Egypt in 80 BCE. The identity of Cleopatra's mother is not known for certain, but it was either one of Orletes's concubines or his sister wife, Cleopatra v. Trifiana. It was common in Egypt for rulers to marry family members, cousins or siblings, most often, in order to keep bloodlines pure. It's very possible that Cleopatra resulted from one of these relationships. Cleopatra and Mark Antony, her Roman lover, parted ways for a time while the latter fought in Armenia. Cleopatra made her way to Judea where Herod the Great, a client king of Rome, already resented her because Antony had given Cleopatra much of his land. This didn't stop her from having a criminal conversation with Herod. According to historian Josephus, perhaps she had in some measure a passion of love to him, or rather, what is most probable, she laid a treacherous snare for him, by aiming to obtain such adulterous conversation from him. However, upon the whole, she seemed overcome with love to him. 
Herod was not sure how to respond to Cleopatra's advances, and called together a council of friends to decide whether he should end her life for making such treasonous advances. The council talked him out of it, saying Antony would retaliate. Herod thought Antony would be better served if she were out of the picture, but he followed their advice and simply escorted Cleopatra to Egypt. Cleopatra's power over Mark Antony apparently knew no end. The two began their affair in 40 BCE, a year after forming a political alliance. Either way, Antony resided in Alexandria with Cleopatra for a time before returning to Rome. He married Octavia, sister to the Roman Emperor Octavian, then returned to Egypt where Cleopatra had given birth to their two children. The pair went on to have a total of three children together. As the relationship continued, Octavian and Antony barely managed to keep peace between them as they vied for power in the Roman Empire. The debauched life Antony and Cleopatra were said to be leading, combined with the slight to Octavia, drove Octavian to declare war against Cleopatra and strip Antony of his powers in 32 BCE. When Cleopatra seduced Julius Caesar, she famously had herself smuggled in to see him by way of a bed sack, a rug, or a bedroll, depending on the source, she said to have immediately captivated him. At the time, Cleopatra was married to her brother and co-ruler Ptolemy XIII. She was only about 21 years old at the time, but Caesar was well in his fifties and on his third wife, Calpurnia. Their marriages didn't stop them from continuing their affair and producing a child, Caesarion. Cleopatra even went to Rome to be with Caesar in 45 BCE, albeit with her second co-ruling brother Ptolemy XIV. She stayed in Rome until one month after Caesar's demise in 44 BCE, then returned to Egypt. There are different versions of Cleopatra's attempts to get Octavian into bed, but they all end with Octavian resisting her. In one telling, Cleopatra tried to lure Octavian into her sexual web shortly after Mark Antony's defeat at Actium and subsequent suicide. As a prisoner, she gained an audience with Octavian. According to historian Cassius Dio, she accordingly prepared a splendid apartment and a costly couch, and moreover arrayed herself with affected negligence, indeed, her morning garb wonderfully became her, and seated herself upon the couch, beside her she placed many images of his father, of all kinds, and in her bosom she put all the letters that his father had sent her. She spoke in melting tones and sweet were the glances she cast at him and the words she murmured to him. Octavian was able to resist Cleopatra, but he wanted to take her back to Rome to parade her in triumph, so he didn't rebuke her directly. Before he could transport her, however, she took her own life. Thank you for watching. To support our channel, please subscribe.